Hi, Steve here and welcome to part 2b in my series on the Modo 701 particle system. In the first video I looked at the radial emitter. Flexible as this is, it doesn't really cover all the bases. Besides the radial emitter, there are three other emitter types. The surface emitter, the curve emitter and the source emitter. Let's start with the surface emitter. I'll add it to the schematic in a slightly different way this time. If I click Surface Emitter and then Add Selected, it's brought automatically into the schematic view. And I can pull the particle simulation in by simply double-clicking on the connection point. The Surface Emitter needs some surfaces to work with, so I need to drag the mesh into the schematic and connect it up. Or alternatively, I can select the source directly from the surface emitter properties. And then if I double click, you can see that it's been connected up. Let's run the simulation. Well, the particles are moving rather quickly, so let's go into the surface emitter and adjust the velocities down. And a little more. OK. The surface emitter randomly creates particles on the surface of the geometry. And notice how the particles are moving directly away from the surface that is, in the direction of the surface normals. Here's a nice effect. If I reduce the initial velocity to zero, the particles stick to the surface because when they're created, they have no velocity, they stay stuck on there. And we get a rather interesting twinkling effect. Modo will emit particles from all the surfaces within an item. So let's try adding a different mesh item to see that in effect. We'll disconnect surfaces 1 and connect up surfaces 2. Let's give some velocity to the particles. As you can see the particles are now being emitted from, from both of the objects in the mesh item. You probably noticed that when the surfaces were invisible, the particles are still emitted. There are a couple of settings that are unique to the surface emitter. I'll demonstrate them using this exciting model here. I think it'll be easier to see what's going on if I switch to one of the orthographic views. As you can see, the particles are no longer being emitted exactly on the surface, but offset by a certain amount. And I can adjust that amount. It's not immediately obvious, but you can also set these values to negative numbers. And the rule is that the particles be emitted somewhere in the region between the minimum offset and the maximum offset. So I can set the maximum offset to say 50 and the particles should be emitted somewhere between 50 millimetres below the surface and 50 millimetres above it. The curve emitter is the analogue of the surface emitter but for, well, curves. It has some interesting tricks up its sleeve. Let's run the simulation. we can choose whether to emit particles from all the curves or from just one of them. If we uncheck Use All Curves, then the particles are emitted from just one curve and we can change to a different curve. 
The most interesting feature is the ability to control the particle density according to the parametric distance along the curve. You can think of the curve as having a number line running along it from 0 to 1, and we can use the mini graph editor to adjust the particle distribution. Of course, if you need more accuracy, you can always pop up the full-sized graph editor. Finally, we get to control whether the particles are emitted exactly on the curve or offset. This is exactly analogous to the surface emitter case. You can see that the particles are now being emitted offset from the curve. The final emitter type is the source emitter. This innocuous emitter turns out to be a very powerful tool. On the face of it there's not a lot to shout about. The emitter uses points as the source for its emissions. Big deal. In this example we have a cube used as the source and particles are emitted from each of the eight vertices. If I increase the number of vertices, I get more particle sources. The source emitter has a setting Emit Mode, which controls how many particles are emitted per point. In fixed total rate mode, the emission rate is shared out between the points. In fixed average mode, each point emits at the emission rate. I'm going to skip per particle rate because this makes more sense later on when we look at some of the rest of the particle system machinery. The last mode is pulse. In pulse mode, one particle per point is emitted when the pulse channel goes from false to true. This is not especially useful on its own, but combined with an animation rig, it can be used to schedule your particle events exactly when you want them. In this example, I'm using a modulo operator, modulo is just a fancy name for remainder, and feeding it the frame number. I then compare the result with zero and the idea is that at frame zero the result is true, at frame 10 the result is true, frame 20 the result is true. So I should get an emission every 10 frames. First I need to expose the pulse channel in the source emitter. I can simply drag it in and then connect it up. And let's see what happens. I'll have to use the solid play button because otherwise the frame number will be fixed. There we can see the particles are being emitted every 10 frames. Of course we have complete control over how often particles are emitted. If I change it to 5 frames then we should get more particles emitted. If I change it to 2 frames we get even more particles. Well, so far so mm, meh. The real power of the source emitter derives from the fact that in Modo we can generate points in many different ways. We can use point clouds, surface particle generators, and even other particle systems to feed into the source emitter. When combined with a surface particle generator, we can start to integrate shader tree effects into the particle system. In this example, I've got a simple plane with a marble vein texture applied to it, and I'm visualizing it using 
the RAGL viewing mode. What we would like to do is emit particles from this surface in the white areas but not in the black areas. So let's start by creating a surface particle generator. And we'll connect the output of the surface particle generator into our source emitter. We need to specify which surface is going to be used as the source for the surface particle generator. So we can just drag our mesh in and wire that in as well. And now we're getting some particles generated on the surface. If I highlight the surface they'll show up in yellow which is easier to see. And we need a few more particles to make it look a bit interesting so let's reduce the spacing. And now we have a nice density of particles. If I turn RayGL off you can see that they're distributed randomly over the surface. OK, we now need to use this texture to modulate where the particles are generated or where the surface particles are generated. The way that we do that is we apply a item mask. So we create an item mask for our surface particle generator and then in the shader tree we have an item mask in the FX section and we need to create a copy of this marble texture and place that into the surface particle generator mask. At the moment it's controlling fall off value, we don't want that. We can change that to particle density and now if I turn RayGL off you'll see that the surface particle generator has now generated random particles in the white areas of the texture with no particles in the black areas of the texture. OK, this is being used as the input to our source emitter so if we run the particle engine we get particles being emitted from the generated points. Just to make sure that they really are coming from just those points, let's reduce their velocities to zero. And perhaps make them a little bit more visible and a little bit bigger. And there we are, we can see the particles are in fact being generated on the surface in the areas that we wanted. And now for the pièce de résistance. We can connect a particle simulation output into a source emitter. This means that particles generated by the first simulation will be used as the source for the second simulation. Here we have a radial emitter with a relatively low emission rate, just one in fact, which will generate particles at random into this particle simulation and then those will be used as the input to the second simulation. For the British audience of a certain age, can you see what it is yet? Well we don't have to guess, we just need to run the simulation. At this point it's hard to resist adding just a little extra flourish to this setup. Turbulence on an aeroplane is no fun at all, but here I think it's just the thing. Let's add a turbulence force into the scene and see what that does to our system. <laughs> 
Thanks for watching this video. In the next video in the series I'm going to look at the particle operator and this is where things start getting really interesting.